it's time to go beyond plus ultra for more Boku no Hero Academia. Are we still in school? Are we good? Are we hey. still high school kids with powers? Hey, be cool. Stay in Boku. Doesn't Boku just kind of mean I, though? Um, yeah. <laughs> that, I don't think, I don't think that works. Um, be cool. Stay in academia. There you go. That'll, yeah, that'll work. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> don't you remember from watching the Boku no Yatsu, Natsu Yatsumi review that that means, like, I or whatever? <laughs> I, I fucking finished that, by the way. Um, I th I think I'm like, I think I have like two or three more segments left. <laughs> I'm like sliding that in whenever I have time. Like, holy shit, dude! Though. Yeah, that but like so long. Yeah, watching like a six-hour thing. Oh no! Don't do it at once. <laughs> I did it like over the course of like four or five sessions. Yeah, yeah, same, same. I'm going to like break it down whenever I can. Oh, uh, but yeah, we have primarily Team Edshot this time. I think only Team Edshot. I don't think yeah. we cut over to the other one at all. Uh, I think we're cutting back to the hospital. I meant in this episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we're cutting back to them next time at the hospital. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. So, Team Edshot destroys a lot of the exits to the villa with only the main entrance being the main enter and exit point. Although somebody says, I think it was Fatgum who said, we found like five underground exits. Yeah, I think that lead to the outside of the, uh, of the actual compound. So like the main entrances were the ones that were destroyed, right? Not like uh, the secret ones. Yeah, not the secret ones. Yep, we have someone running in being like, Redistro, shit's gone whack, yo! And he's like, Nani? Yeah, and I just love it how he was all composed. He was like, oh, people are breaking in. Huh, they're running you wild? And then his face just suddenly turns. So my first question, right, as soon as we saw him, I'm like, wait a minute. He's standing. Why does he have legs? Because if you recall, at the end of the last season, those things were decayed away from his fight with uh, Higurashi. Oh. Not Higurashi. What's his fucking name? Shigaraki. Shigaraki. There you go. You know, yeah. I was talking to my one coworker, and I made that same mistake. It sounds very similar when you're not thinking about it. Right. And have we um, ever seen Edshot before? Uh, the guy that goes to paper. Yeah, it was like a I ninja. believe he was. The We've seen him before. I want to say he was there when they were fighting um, all for one at one point. Okay, so I think he, he was there during that fight. So he hasn't shown up in a while. He hasn't shown up in a while outside of maybe just some like quick flashes to like, oh, here's a hero that's really important. Mm -mm. I think he's like number six or seven or something. Uh, crap. I don't have my notes with me last week, but. We did meet the number six hero last week. Right, that was S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah. Uh, what number is he, does it say in the wiki? Mm, I don't see it. I don't see a name or a number uh, associated with him. But I thought he was a higher one, though. Yeah, but he must be pretty high up so that he has a team to lead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. Um, either way. And he uh, seems to be a ninja of some kind. Well, I mean, he could probably fold himself into a paper-throwing star. And did he, like, pierce a bunch of people? It's like, I put a hole in your lung. Don't move around too much. It will heal naturally. Yeah, that's basically what he did. He, like, un like folded himself into, a, like, a really sharp piece of paper, I guess, and pierced through a bunch of people's lungs. And basically was like, hey, look. I wouldn't move around if I were you. You could die from the bleed out, but uh, if you just sit there for a while and let it heal up, you'll be good. And I'm just thinking, like, how long would it take to heal a hole through your lung? Depends on how small that hole is. Maybe if it's like a pinprick hole? Well, I mean, I, I was thinking, like, maybe the size of a bullet. Oh, right? okay. I, I'm thinking about that size. 
Um, I think you'd probably be fine. Like if you would just sit there and eventually you'd get the medical attention you need and you wouldn't die. Because the minute you start moving around, your blood's pumping more, your lungs are working harder to oxygenate that blood, and it just makes that all worse. Yeah, yeah. You don't move, you don't do anything too strenuous, your blood will stay where it needs to stay for the most part. Yes, it will, you know, cause issues, but it will be, you will be alive long enough for help to uh, to finish helping, like, patch you up. Yeah, but it's just the whole, it will heal by itself, that, that just threw me off a little bit. Yeah, that, that's true, that's right, he did say that specifically, so maybe it's it'd be smaller? Yeah. Uh, it could just be the idea that, like, the more you move, the more that hole widens as you move. Maybe. So we have Hawks is pinning down twice. Uh, <laughs> that sentence, oh boy. Um, twice is pinned down by Hawks? Is that any better? I, I think that's better because Hawks is pinning him da pinning down, uh, pinning down twice. So why is he pinning things? What is he pinning down twice? So, I'm um, twice. Is he pinning, what is he pinning down two times, man? That's what I want to know. Uh, tw tw twice is on his back, and Hawks' feathers are aimed at him. Yep, and uh, twice is having a bit of a breakdown, as you do, when you find out that the guy that you've been, like, super buddy buddy with has betrayed you. Oh, man. T these aren't great days. Oh, uh, I wish you'd also point out that some fun stuff has been going on where Midnight has been jumping in and just, like, gassing everyone. Uh, Kamui Woods over here is, like, wrapping people up in wooden shackles. You know, Mudman is, like, sinking people into the ground like the stand would. And then you just got Mushroom Girl, who's just having fun with the mushrooms. I can't believe you completely ignored my JoJo reference. Hey, look, man, I talked about a stand. I didn't ignore it. I just overrode it with my own. <laughs> the lyrics to Great Days, break down, break down. Uh-huh, and? Okay. Uh-huh, go on. I think I think I, uh, I think I overrode it already. I yes, yes, you did. <laughs> no, I'm going to have a breakdown, <laughs> breakdown. Do it off uh, off mic, man. We're gonna, I don't want to. I don't want to subject the poor people to that. Oh, let the voice of love take you higher. I'm gonna take you specifically higher, because you need to be lifted out of these uh, these deep dark times. <laughs> oh, not the deep dark times that Twice is having. Oh yeah, because Twice is just losing his shit. Yeah, I. Slightly like felt bad guilt. for him. Oh, yeah. I honestly didn't think this was going to go the way it went. Like, in my head, I'm like, if any of the villains would ever get reformed, it was going to be twice. Yeah, but... That ain't going to happen anymore. No, because Hawk is saying, like, hey, you can start over. I don't want to fight you. I honestly think of you as a friend. He doesn't use those words, but the feeling is definitely there. You're such a nice guy. Like, you, you can do this. You don't have to be like this. Yeah. Like, in this situation. And Twice is like, no, screw you, Hawks. You know, yeah, does that. Gets himself shredded up a bit. Uh, tries to clone things. Doesn't work out too well. No. Uh, Hawks is just too fast killing those clones immediately as they spawn. Yeah, and then he summons clones of the League of Villains. And they do nothing. They just gone. No. <laughs> like they barely get formed before they're just slaughtered. Yeah. And, and, mud. and then twice starts to form an army. And doesn't work. And then we cut away to Good old Fat Gum. Yep. And your stand user of the series, Dark Shadow. Tokoyomi and Dark Shadow and uh Sun Wolf? I think his name was Sun Eater. Sun Eater. Yeah, I mean he's the guy that whatever. Oh, he, I remember. Yeah. I, I remember the ability. I just couldn't remember his name. Yeah, whatever he eats, he can turn his limbs into. Yep. Yep. So he ate like horse and pineapple. Uh, it also looks like there's durian in there. 
Oh, okay, then maybe I'm thinking the pine the durian was pineapple, okay. No, 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 it looks like it's both. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, it looks like durian, pineapple, and then he's a horse. Actually, he's also got horns, so he ate something with horns. Hmm. But, uh, yeah, he's, he's there... He's there clearing the way. That would... That would be a cool... I was just about to say stand. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a, a cool quirk to have. Like, whatever you eat, you could change into. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Uses that special technique he calls Chimera Centaur. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Somebody... Even better. Somebody yells out, Man, that's so cool! Say it again! And he's just <laughs> sitting there like, Fucking God, why no? <laughs> just leave me alone! Embarrassed uh, by his own shit. Yes, so Dark Shadow sees a monster down in the hole. Yeah, he goes down the secret passage to like shatter the and break down the thing. Mm-hmm. Fat Gum standing guard at the entrance to uh, let him do his thing. With... And w- was that monster Gigamachia or not? That's the one that Dark Shadow tells him about. Okay, We're not trying... Redestro who tries to block. Dark, Dark Shadow. Shadow's Ragnarok. Although, yeah, here's where we find out. Apparently, he just has prosthetic limbs. Yeah. Which I'm like, okay, all right, you've answered my question. Now I know how the hell he was standing. Because I was very confused when I saw him standing at the start, and I'm like, did he regrow his legs? Did somebody uh-huh. somebody give him a quirk to, like, did somebody use their quirk to, like, help him regrow his limbs? There is a very slim chance because... The My Villain Academia arc took place before the dinner with, oh crap, what was that? Dinner with... The, the, oh, um, the guy with the flaming mustache, I forget his name. Oh, Endeavor? Thank you, Dinner with Endeavor arc. Maybe, like, at the end of... Of that, they showed him getting prosthetic legs again. I mean, maybe. I mean, we saw him when he was, like, calling in the the League of Villains, and at that point, uh, he was in a wheelchair. Oh. Now, granted, like you said, the timing is different. It was kind of mixed around in the uh, in the anime here. Yeah, so... Um, so he's had time. But, yeah, my thought was... I was wondering if a quirk had been used to, like, help him regrow his limbs, which, you know, even giving the timing there... I would have assumed that we would have had a little bit of time between season four's end and season, uh, or season five's end and season six's beginning. Mm. You know, just yeah. to like organize all this shit. But yeah, I had thought, do they regrow his limbs? But no, we get to see like the fake prosthetic shatter as he tries to block Ragnarok, which doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah, but then we get Dark Shadow telling Tokiomi about it, and he's like, no, 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 not the one that stopped me. There's another one down there. Which, yeah, is Gigantomachia. Mm-hmm. And apparently, uh, Fat Gum's got the intel to be like, yeah, that thing ain't moving unless its boss says something. Which, you know, means the boss is going to say something at some point during this. Yeah. And, um, Tokiomi gets inside Fat Gum's stomach? <laughs> that or his coat? I really don't know which. Is he, Which I'm wondering why. Is he that squishy? I mean, he's got a lot of fat. I, Actually, I, yeah, no, it is, he is in his stomach, technically. Like a big old pouch, like a kangaroo. With Tokiomi's head just sticking out. His head and his hands are just, like, right there, like a fucking little rabbit. Like, what's going on out here? Interestingly enough, uh, I don't know why they're doing this at all. Why can't Tokiomi just run on his own? I don't understand. Yeah, yeah, or fly on his own. I don't know how well he can fly. I know in the in the A versus B arc that we had in the previous season, I think he was gliding. I don't think he was fully flying. Oh yeah, and or and he had a or he had a trick to do it. One of the two. And it's sunny out, so Dark Shadow may Would not be weaker. Be... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But yeah, then we cut back to Hawks after we have Tokiomi's little monologue about like, Hawks, you need to watch me grow up, man. Please watch over me again, man. You're my hero. Yeah. 
And meanwhile, Hawks is still fighting twice, whose army is getting slaughtered. And does it take any stamina of twice to, like, give his clones life? I mean, I'm sure it takes some, but because he does it so often, I'm assuming that it's minimal. Okay, because him creating, like, hundreds for that one scene... Well, we saw that in season uh, five, where he created, like, a giant fucking army. Oh, yeah. I forgot um, about that. Either way, it gets to the point where uh, Hawks has one of his feather swords against twice his neck, ready to kill him, if he keeps going. And then we get a bunch of blue fire bursted in. Hello, Dobby. What's going on, Mr. Stitches? Or I guess he's actually Mr. Staples. Yeah. Even to the point where, like, um, Hawks is literally saving him, even though Dobby's, like, trying to murder both him and Twice at the same time. Twice is, at minimum, just, like, a casualty of, like, you're just there. Oops. Yeah, and Hawks' wings get singed. Uh, yep. Putting Hawks in a real bad position, because he's, he's running out of ammo to work with. Yeah. And then Dobby launches a huge flame blast attack that doesn't kill Hawks because... Well, uh, um, what is it? Twice Quick makes a clone to, like, hold Hawks in place while Dobby fires it. And Twice runs back like, go kill him, get him! Yeah, Twice is still the villain. Yep. Like I said, not uh, seems pretty solidly not going to change. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, flaming up, going real well, right up until Hawks Hawk comes goes flying the around the ball. other side. Yeah. Yep. The giant fireball that blasted him out the window, in fact, allowed him to escape and swing around the other side. And he's too fast. And I'm surprised he could still fly with his burnt wings. Oh, he probably can't do it well. I'm sure he's been in plenty of situations where his feathers are, like, running low. Here's the other thing, too. I'm, how I'm not 100% sure how this works. And part of that is just, like, his feathers can float on their own. So does he even need to flap his wings like a normal bird would? Are they mentally controlled? I want to say yes kind of my assumption considering they're all just standing there at one point pointed at twice so yeah maybe he can just like glide around using the power of his mind yeah using the ability to like float the individual feathers on his of his quote-unquote wings to float his whole body hmm yeah so clearly enough of them haven't burnt away to stop him from flying at least yeah um and somehow Dobby knows Hawks' real name. So, if the theory is still correct, uh, again, I have no idea whether this is the case or not, and Dobby is in fact one of uh, 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 Endeavor's long-lost sons, like his first one or whatever, Oh, it wouldn't make sense because uh, Hawks was the one that was always watching Endeavor. He didn't care as much about All Might. Oh. It might make some sense. If that's still true, like if that is still a thing that is true, and this doesn't seem to dissuade that idea, in fact, seems more likely it's true. Uh, and then Twice is really beat up, and he sends off a clone, and somebody comes up so, behind. So here's the thing, right? During this moment where he's like, protect your friends twice, this and that, I'm like, oh shit. Is his quirk gonna evolve here? Like we saw with Shigaraki's uh -huh. in the previous season? The prior thing that Twice did was more like he got over his mental trauma and could use it to its fullest. And this one, I was like, is the literal pressure and stress of the situation going to force his quirk to evolve? Which would have been really cool to see what that would mean. But who came up behind him with the knife? Oh, it was fucking uh, guaranteed. No, it was, uh, 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 what's his, uh, Hawks. It was definitely Hawks. Oh, so, okay, so Hawks kills twice. Yep. Oh. Hawks walks in, 
Cox goes through the literal blue flame to kill twice. Mm, okay. Because he cannot allow that guy to go through with what he's, his ability would mean. I don't think Hawks had his goggles on at that point. Oh, no, he lost those after the first flame. Okay, through. okay, that's why I couldn't... His coat, qu- too. He lost his goggles and his coat. Okay, that's why I couldn't quite tell if it was Hawks or not. Yeah, I've got the scene up right now. It's definitely Hawks, and you can see the feather blade ready to plunge into his back. Okay. But yeah, it it is for sure Hawks. And who was the guy in the yellow jumpsuit with, like, the ghost hands? I don't think it ever gave us a name for him. No, I don't. We never get a name for this guy. Uh, hold on. Does... You get the villain names and readdressing of their quirks for Compress and Toga. But we get nothing on this hero. Uh, does the Boko no Hero wiki say anything about him? Yeah, because there might have been, like, those uh, hero-slash-villain profiles in between chapters that addressed who this guy was. Oh, oh, and something about this season. I don't think it shows, like, the the way that they did in previous seasons, because I think it used to give a synopsis of their quirk. Now it just shows you a picture of the character with their name. Yeah, not, yeah. now you just got, like, a fancy action pose and, like, uh, cool text along with the name. Yeah, you, you don't really get your uh, little bio in this one. Yeah, so I'm not too sure what I think of that. I mean, they were good for reminders because generally they were characters we had already met, like, as to what they were, but we kept going through the same ones. Yeah. Like occasionally we'd get a new one, but it was usually just, oh, yeah, the same 20 students or whatever from Class A for the most part. But, uh, yeah, we cut to Toga and Compress getting captured by this, like, snake ghost hero dude um, or whatever. His name is Eel Boy. That's a weird name. Especially considering, like, the costume makes him look way more badass than it should. Yeah, um, and... He has an unnamed eel quirk where he can sprout eel-like appendages from the back of his hands. But they're also white, so they're not they're like they're not actual eels, they're something else. They're ghost eels. Ooh. Yeah, the fish like the fish style eels, like the real eels. Yeah. Like, eel-ish, like eel-like, I guess, like you hmm. said. Uh but uh, he gets stabbed in the back by twice. Or at least twice his clone. Yeah. Who's literally the last thing the original twice created. Whether Here's the thing. I don't know if at this point, if actual twice is still alive. And that a copy of twice was the one that died? No, 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 no. I mean, while this copy is saving Toga and Compress, I don't know if the real Twice is dead at this point. Ah, okay, okay, so this could be happening. The last, the last living bit of consciousness that Twice has is this clone. Ah, uh, okay, okay. I don't know. Because we get a monologue, but I don't know if that's the clone's monologue or the original's monologue. Speaking through the clone. Or even, not even speaking through the clone, like speaking in his head. Because after the clone kind of dissipates, or, like, is down to, like, almost nothing but mud, mm-hmm. and we're, like, zooming in on, like, what is left, essentially, of, like, twice his head sticking over the edge Ah, okay. Of the, of the balcony. We're getting that monologue, right? Yeah. I don't know if that's still the clone as it's dispersing, or if that's actual twice. Yeah, yeah. So, he says his goodbyes to Toga and Compress. Here's the most interesting bit about this. Like, saying his goodbyes as he's literally melting away. Mm -hmm. It reminded me immediately of, like, the intro sequence and just how the one shot we have of Toga is her facing away and ripping off her scarf. Oh. Or, like, the red ribbon or whatever she has. And I'm like... Ooh... These two things combined equal what for Toga? Like... Will Toga's quirk evolve? 
Is she gonna be on, like, the fucking blood path of I'm gonna kill everyone? Because if she wasn't a psychotic Yandere, I think she would actually be a nice person to be around. Much like Twice, I think she could be reformed, right? Yeah. Like, Twice is the most likely. Himiko's probably the second. There is a chance you could bring them back around. I really believe that for both of those two characters. Mm-hmm. And I just feel... I, I was going to say, but Twice, as far as his circumstances, just keep fucking him over to put him in a position where he can't. Yeah, or I, he won't. I felt bad Twice died. He was one of my favorite characters in the series. Well, he was also comedy, which is one of your favorite things. Yeah, but just like his whole character arc of, am I the real me? I don't want to use my quirk because of that. Okay, I'm going to use my quirk because I don't care anymore. Just like that arc was so good. Well, and even in this, it really blurs the line, like... If you're not looking at the, what the main goal is here for, like, their organization, it really feels like either one of them could be the hero here. Hawks is painted in a really evil light mm-hmm. with the way he's holding down twice and all that other shit. Yeah. And you have twice shouting about how I need to save my friends or do it for my friends. My life isn't worth it is only here to help them. So is there a chance that... By the end of this series, Hawks might become a villain? Oh, I don't think so. I just think this episode is, like, put in the way to flip that feeling. To, like, try and put that idea of both sides think it's right. What they're doing is right. You know? Both sides have the same feelings, even if the end goal is different. We just had fucking, uh, uh, what's-his-face? Uh, Electric Dude. Uh, from class 1A. Oh, uh, uh, Denki. Charge. Charge. Uh, yeah. yeah, his name's, his hero name's Charge. We just had him saying, like, at the end of the previous episode, so no one in the back has to worry, I'll fight this battle or whatever, or I'll take this leader down or what have you, right? Right at the end of the previous episode. And then we lead in with this, and Twice is saying something almost identical. Yeah, because, like, the villains want to make a world where... Everybody's has the freedom to use their quirk the way they want. Mm-hmm. Hmm. They want what would end in total anarchy. But to them, that may not be the worst thing. Oh, no, because you'd be free to do whatever you want. Yeah. But it would lead to total anarchy. Yeah, so I'm really interested to know where this will go now like will toga break and become even more psychotic or what well here's the thing right is she going on a murder hawks mission because she has no idea who took out twice right Mm -hmm. no clue so the question is is she going to try and find out and make sure that that guy suffers Assuming Dobby just doesn't end it, because we get a shot of Hawks getting the shit kicked out of him by Dobby at the start of that. Ooh. Will Hawks die? I mean, he's in a shit position right now, so there's a decent enough chance. Ooh. This will be a very interesting next episode, or possibly two episodes down the line. I mean, I, I'm guessing, based on what this looks like... Cementos could step in and just, you know, cover Dobby if he sees this going down. Mm-hmm. But I don't know for sure. There, there is plenty of shit going on that Cementos could not, might not catch this. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, we have a nice little Dobby Hawks thing going on, and then we're flipping back to what uh, seems to be our fight with the Nomus at the hospital. Yeah, and maybe Eggman will escape. Either that, or he has Shigaraki on a fast forward. One of the two. It seems like, if I was going to guess, he's trying to speed up the process to get Shigaraki out of there. Because I don't think he's getting him out of there in the tube. Because Shigaraki seems to be conscious enough that he pops up in the intro in a battle stance. Like, he is definitely not going to be in there all season, for sure. Or even, like, the first half. He will get out. It's just a matter of, is it going to be now or later? 
Um, I am going... Like, we do get a shot of him here in, um, in the teaser at the end here. Mm Mm-hmm. Of, like, his eyes glowing purple and him having, like, a grin on his face. Well, But he's still in the bubbly tube, well, so... Well, my guess is that episode four, maybe five, will have him come out of the tube, go back to Edshot. That could very well be. My real question is going to be, if he does get out, how does he deal with Eraserhead if the Nomus haven't been able to stop him yet? Because Eraserhead is literally the linchpin that we've seen so far of yeah. how do we shut down these Nomus. Hmm. Well, I guess to find out, keep tuned to Boku no Hero Academia and us reviewing it. Okay, so I guess we'll catch everybody next time. Watch our shit. Bye. <laughs>